Hello. In this video, we will learn about the method of integrating factors. The method of integrating factors is used to solve linear first order differential equations. The format for a linear first order differential equation is the following. And linear first order differential equations can also be written in an alternate form that looks like this. You can convert from this second format to the first format by dividing by P of T. Okay, so in terms of learning about the method of integrating factors, the method was inspired by the following example. So suppose you want to go through and solve this differential equation. So we're looking, again, we're looking for the y that we could plug in, that we take the derivative of and plug in here and plug in here that would make the differential equation true. So after studying this for a while, you'll notice that the left-hand side here is the result of a product rule. In particular, it's the result of this product rule. And you could go through and check this by taking the product rule of this, uh, of, of this function, and you'll end up getting this result. And the 4t just drops down here. And at once we've written the, the, the this expression as a product rule, we can then go through and integrate both sides to get rid of this derivative, which can enable us to get uh, access to y, then we can get y by itself. So once you integrate, the integral and the derivative cancel, and we get 4 plus t squared. And the antiderivative 4t is 2t squared. Put in a plus c. Divide the 4 plus t squared over, and you get y equals 2t squared over 4 plus t squared plus c over 4 plus t squared. And that's our result. That is the function y that we could take and plug in to this original differential equation that would make the differential equation true. OK, so let's look at another example. Unfortunately, when we examine this, not a product rule. So what can we do? 
Okay, well, what we can do is we can go through and we can try and make the left-hand side into a product rule by multiplying by something called an integrating factor. So we take mu of t, multiply it by dy dt, mu of t, multiply it by 1 half y, and mu of t, multiply it by one half e to the one third t. And then the question is, how about this? Is this a product rule? In order to check whether that's a product rule or not, what we can do is we can calculate the derivative, uh, we calculate a product rule and do a comparison. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to t, get the following. And if you compare these two things, you can see that they are similar. The first term is exactly the same. The second term is not. Um, so they're not exactly the same, but they are, there are some similarities. And so the question, is this a product rule? And if we, by, comparison, com by comparing to something that where we actually went through and calculated a product rule, we can see that it's close. All right, it's close. So to go through and make this so that it is a product rule, what we need to do is we need to get them to be exactly the same. And to do that, this term has to be the same as this term. And so it enables us to go through and create another equation. And once we have that equation, we could go through and cancel the y's. And then we can go through and manipulate this equation, move, move the mu of t under the left-hand side. The left-hand side is now the, res the derivative of a natural log function. So we could integrate to reverse that. And the, an the antiderivative here is going to be the natural log u of t equals 1 half t plus c. And then at this point, we'll have to move to the next page. OK, so. In order to continue to solve for mu of t here, we can plug in both sides as the exponent of e. e and the natural log cancel. And then we can drop these absolute values because we have mu equal to an exponential function, which is always positive. And then finally, we can move the C out front as we have previously. And this gives us an equation for, for a mu of T. So what is the consequence of this? What, you know, what, 
what, was, what did we what did we just accomplish? Well, what we accomplished is we wanted the left hand side to be a product rule. So what we did is we compared the left hand side to an actual product rule. We then created an equation by matching up the two things that were different, right? That prevented this from being a product rule. We then went through and solved for that enabled us to go through and solve for mu of t. And so what it did is it told us what mu of t we would have to plug into this that would make this so that it is a product rule, so that it does fit this format. Okay. So that's the consequence. Now, and and along with that, right, is that we're just looking for one mu of t. The C here is giving us a family of mu of t. It turns out that there's more than one mu of t that would enable us to have a product rule on that left-hand side. So what we can do is we can just go through and pick C to equal one. And then you'll get mu of t equals e to the one half t. Okay, so there may be a, there's a, one question that you may have uh, is, did we accomplish our objective? Is the left-hand side now a product rule? Well, what we can do is we can go through and check that before we proceed any further, right? By taking the left-hand side here and then just plugging in the mu of t that we just created, all right? So if we do that, what we're gonna end up with is we're gonna end up with e to the one half t, right? So that's our mu and then times dy dt. And then plus, and then we're going to have mu of t times one half. So we're going to have e to the one half t times one half times y. Okay, and so if you look at that, does that look like a product rule? Well, to answer that question, you need to think about what a product rule does look like, right? So if we calculate the derivative of a product rule, a if we calculate the derivative of a product, the product rule tells us that we have, at least this is the way that I have it memorized, is that it's got the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So what you have is you have two, um, two terms, one of which has the derivative of one thing and the other one has the derivative of the other. Okay, and if you look at this, this one has the derivative of this and this one has the derivative of that. So it does fit that format. And in case you're not certain, you could still, you could always go through and just check this e to the one half t times y. We end up getting e to the one half t times dy dt plus y times one half e to the one half t. And they do match up. So we accomplished our objective. Okay, so we were successful in going through and creating a product rule on the left-hand side of this, of this equation. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go through and solve that exactly the way that we did this first example. So that's the heavy lifting is to go through and create that product rule on the left-hand side. So let's start over at the very beginning and go through and solve this equation again using our integrating factor. Okay, so again, we start off. The left-hand side is not a product rule. So we go through and we multiply by mu of t We go through and we do a bunch of steps that tell us that mu of t equals e to the one half t, which we can then plug in. We know that the left-hand side is a product rule because of the steps that we used uh, in this in this 
second part of the problem. And so we can go through and rewrite this as the derivative of e to the 1 half t times y. And on this side, we can combine these. At this point, we can integrate both sides with respect to t. The integral and the derivative cancel. The antiderivative of that of e to the 5 6 t is going to be 6 fifths e to the 5 6 t plus c. We can divide over. We get y equals And then we can simplify. So we get y equals and that's our answer. Okay. And so as long as we can go through and do this second step here that enables us to go through and figure out the integrating factor, that enables us to take the left hand side make it into a product rule, then we can rewrite it as the derivative of a product, then we can integrate and solve the differential equation, just like we did in our first example that inspired the method. Okay, so that's the technique. What we need to do next is we need to go through and come up with a general formula. The, 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 the work that we did in this problem right, is too cumbersome to, as to, to be the entirety of the method. So if every single time you started here, you wrote this, this is a product rule, you wrote a product rule, you compared, you created an equation, you solved it, uh, you know, and then you went through and then started over at the beginning, plugged it in, and then did all this, all these steps, that's just much too cumbersome. So what we want to do is we want to take the, the technique that we just learned, all of the work that we just learned, and we want to create a general method, a general formula. And that general formula will make it so that we essentially have a fork for a shortcut to solve these linear first order differential equations. Generalize the method, we need a general first order differential equation. All right, we, we're going to assume that this is that the left hand side is not a product rule. So now off to the side, I'm going to go through the steps to figure out what mu of t should be. All right, so we're going to start off by, so we're going to move off to the side here and we're going to multiply mu of t through this. All right, and so off to the side here, where we want the left-hand side to be a product rule. So we can check, go ahead and calculate a derivative. We can compare these, we can see, oh, hey, they're close. This and this are already the same. We just need these two to be the same. That enables us to create another equation. The y's cancel. We then can divide the mu of t over. Integrate both sides with respect to t. This is the derivative of natural log. We 
we can go through and get get access to the mu of t by making both sides the exponent of e. The e and the natural log cancel. Since this is an exponential function, we can ditch the absolute values. We can move the C out front. And we end up getting a formula for mu. And just as we did on the previous example, we can go ahead and say, we can go ahead and let C equal one. And if C equals one, we get mu of T equals e to the integral of p of t dt. And so that enables us to go through and have a formula. Now keep in mind, if we're generalizing this method, when we go through and, and apply this to an actual differential equation, we'll know what p and g are. And so we can just take whatever the p function is and just plug it directly into this and it will get us mu of t. Okay. So if we go ahead and let's just try and solve this now using what we just generated. And rather than take e to the integral of p of t and plug it in, I'm going to wait and plug it in at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as mu of t just for a step or two. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and write this step. So we're going to multiply through by mu of t. Then the left-hand side, per all this work that we just did, we know is going to be the derivative. And then at this point, we want to get access to the y. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to t. The integral and the derivative cancel. And then we can divide over the mu of t. And that completes the formula. At this point, if you had gone through and solved for mu of t, you could just plug it in here at the end. Okay, and that's actually how we will go through and do uh, actual problems using the method, right? So this boils down into three steps, all right? And so um, a lot of this is just algebra and it's the same every single time. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write those three steps. So what are the three steps? So you have here is step one. Step two, you could go through and do this then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And so step two culminates here. And then if you took that, plugged it in, it's gonna make the left hand, hand side a product rule. Then you could go through and do this and this and this. And so this is our final result. So step one, you've got the problem. Step two, it turns into this once you multiply by mu of t. Step three, you do all of this and you end up here. So let's just summarize that on the next page. That's going to be our formula. So if we have dy dt plus p of ty equal g of t, then we can go through and we can say let mu of t equal e to the integral p of t dt. And if that's the case, then the solution of the differential equation is going to be y equals 1 over mu of t times the integral mu of t g of t dt plus c. The end. All right, so that is the method. The method of integrating factors is these three steps.
Step one, the problem. Step two, the integrating factor. Step three is the solution. Okay, so let's go through and try and see. Let's, let's, let's go through and do an example problem to see this method in action. Actually, let's just clear the page. So we have dy dt minus 2y equals t squared e to the 2t. OK, so the first step you want to do is to compare this to the format, right? So the format is dy dt plus p of t y equals g of t. So if you compare these two, you can see that p of t is negative 2, right? And g of t is t squared e to the 2t. All right, so the first step is to go through and find the integrating factor. So the integrating factor is going to be mu of t equals e to the integral p of t. And p of t is negative 2, so we get negative 2 dt. The antiderivative of negative 2 dt is going to be negative 2t. OK. And then once you've found the integrating factor, if you were to plug it in, it would make the left-hand side into a product rule. Then we could rewrite it as a product rule, integrate, and we would be, and, and then isolate y, and we would get y equals 1 over mu of t, which is e to the negative 2t times the integral of mu of t, which is e to the negative 2t, times g of t, which is t squared e to the 2t, plus c. And then if you simplify this, this is going to be 1 over e to the negative 2t times the integral. These cancel. So we get t squared dt. There should be a dt in there. And then plus, and then you can go ahead and distribute. And then this is going to be c over e to the negative 2t. And then the antiderivative of t squared is going to be one-third t cubed. And then we can take these e to the negative 2 t's and we can make give them positive exponents. So this is going to be one-third t cubed e to the 2 t plus c e to the 2 t. And that is the method in a nutshell. So you will start off with a first order differential equation. You'll identify p, you'll identify g. Once you've identified p, you'll calculate the integrating factor by integrating by writing e to the integral of p of t dt. Solve for that. Once you get that, go ahead and plug it into the formula that you'd get, um, where y is by itself, and then in your mu in that formula you're going to have an another integral that you need to calculate and you can go ahead and do that one as well and then you're done okay one of the things that you can do if you're a glutton for punishment is go through and check that this actually worked so let's see if we can do that all right so my claim here is that this solution actually will work if we plug it into the differential equation. In order to check it, we need to have dy dt. We already have y. And if we had dy dt, we could just plug both of them in and see if it works. All right, so let's calculate dy dt. So we're going to go through and calculate the derivative of this. To do that, we're going to have to calculate a product rule. So we'll have the first here, which is 1 third t cubed times the derivative of the second, which is 2 e to the 2t plus the second e to the 2t times the derivative of the first, which is going to be t squared. OK, so that's the derivative of this term. And then the derivative of this term, we'll have the c comes down. The derivative of e to the 2t is 2 e to the 2t. And that's it. There's our, our derivative. So now just take that, plug it in here, take this, 
plug it in here and let's see if it works. All right, so I'm going to, to do that. So I'm going to substitute for this with this thing that we just created, right? So let's simplify that. So we're going to have two thirds times t cubed times e to the 2t plus t squared e to the 2t plus 2c e to the 2t. That's this minus 2 times, and we need to plug in y, so that's going to be 1 third t cubed e to the 2t plus c e to the 2t. Now we can simplify that. So we're going to have 2 thirds t cubed e to the 2t, t squared e to the 2t, 2c e to the 2t, minus 2 thirds t cubed e to the 2t, minus 2c e to the 2t. OK, All right. So that we're just calculating the left hand side here. If we go through and calculate the left-hand side, then when we're done simplifying, it should be the right-hand side that will show that that will show that we ended up getting the correct answer. We'll show that it worked. All right, so let's take a look. What do we have here? This and this cancel. This and this cancel, and so we're left with t squared e to the two t. Was that the right-hand side? Yes, it was. So the result that we got worked. Okay, so the method does work. Let's go through and try another example. Okay, so here it's asking us to go through and solve this differential equation and it also the differential equation has an initial condition. So um, if you haven't seen an initial condition for a differential equation, it works very similar to initial conditions from multivariable calculus or, you know, or first semester calculus where you're going through and you have to um, solve for, for an example, if you're given an acceleration and you're asked to go through and find the position function, and at each step you have to know what the initial velocity is and the initial position, so it works exactly the same way as that, right? So it's the initial condition is going to enable us to solve for C just like it did in those two courses. And the way that this works, basically what this is saying is that when T equals one, y equals 2. Okay, So um, we'll take that into consideration when we get to the end and we want to solve for, for c. All right, so let's say we want to go through and solve this. In order to, in order to solve a, you know, you, in order to use the method of integrating factors, it has to fit the format. And if you go back and look at the format, right, let's just take a look. We can actually go back. The, the, the format has to look like this. All right, it has to have dy dt by itself, then something times y equal to something. So you need to first move the t by dividing through by t. If we do that, we get y prime plus 2 over ty equals 4t. Now it does fit the format, right? This would be p of t. This would be g of t. The first step in going through and using the method of integrating factors is to solve for the integrating factor. That has the formula mu of t equals e to the integral p of t dt. So we get e to the integral 2 over t dt. Okay, and to, in order to go through and evaluate that integral, what we can do is we can move the t out front, the 2 out front, and so we'll have 2 integral dt over t. So that's going to be e to the 2 natural log t. And then at that point, we can go through and bring the 2 inside the natural log by making it an exponent. So we can get e to the natural log t squared. 
and that E in the natural log cancel and you'll end up getting T squared for your mu of T. And now once we've done that, we can then jump right to the end. Again, like the way that this method works is all of this stuff does happen. We're just skipping it. Okay, so once we have mu, you could plug it in and then write this and then write this, but we're just gonna jump over all those because every single time the steps are exactly the same and we're just gonna jump right to this last step. All right, what does that last step say? It says y equals one over the mu that we just got, which is t squared times the integral of mu, which is t squared again, times g, which is four t dt plus c. And if we go through and simplify that, so we're gonna get one over t squared times the integral of 4t to the third dt. And then you can go ahead and distribute. This is plus c over t squared. And then the antiderivative of 4t cubed is going to be t to the fourth. And then t to the fourth over t squared, we're going to get t squared. Oops. We're going to get just t squared. <laughs> plus c over t squared. And then finally, since we were given an initial condition, we can go through and solve for c, right? To do that, we can just go ahead and calculate what y of one would equal using this definition we just created. So y of one, we'd plug in one for t. So we're gonna have one squared, which is one plus c over one. So y of one is one plus c, and then y of one is also two. So you can then just substitute in and so uh, C is going to equal one. And so finally, if you put, take that solution, take what we just calculated for C, plug it in, you get Y equals T squared plus one over T squared. And that's your answer. And that's the method of integrating factors. Okay, so let's just kind of boil it down one more time. First, put it into the format, right? So if you're given a differential equation, put it into this format where you have y prime by itself. That enables you ident to identify p and g. Once you've got the function p of t, you can figure out what the integrating factor is by taking e to the integral of p. Find that. Once you've found that, then you can go to your definition for y, which is that it's equal to one over the integrating factor times the integral of the integrating factor times g plus c. So take your g and put it here, and your integrating factor and put it here and here. And every time it's exactly the same. And then you can go through and just simplify from there. And, that, and we can see the same thing over in this problem, right? So once we found out what p was, we calculated what the integrating factor was. And then we did one over the integrating factor times the integral of the integrating factor times g which was this plus C. Okay, so that's the method. Thank you for watching. See you next time.